Hey y'all, this your girl Miss Danny Baby back again, back again with another video. I wanted to touch base as promised and update on the Malia Davis situation. Um, it's been a somber chain of events in the last couple weeks, very emotional roller coaster ride. I understand um, it fatigued um, your adrenals can get fatigued your spirit can get fatigued you can just feel physically and mentally exhausting when we're discussing these type of topics but still we live to fight another day and especially to fight for the voice of children now I was at least somewhat pleased um, though there's no real pleasing in this situation, but I was pleased to see the city of Houston, uh, like one of their city bu buildings down there, um, lit up in pink in honor of Miss Malia da Davis, as you can see here. And for those of you that are not in the know, it's in regards to the little four-year-old that went missing in Houston, Texas. Um, the mother of the child claimed that she didn't know what was what went on she left the child with her supposed stepdad along with her one-year-old while she went out of, ta of town to attend to a sick father and when she got back um the fiance slash stepfather but they were never married uh claimed that he didn't know what happened to the child either after he was uh viciously attacked by some robbers come to find out he's supposedly admitted to the crime allegedly and he admitted to um where the body was and they found it uh, miles away in arkansas it's a beautiful little girl and here's the vigil we're gonna play that real quick before we get into the topic and the discussion was decked out in pink this morning thousands of people marched the streets calling for justice in the death of four-year-old malia davis the girl's body was found last month along a road in Arkansas. Most people at today's event didn't know Malia personally, but they told reporter Matt Doherty that now is the time to make a difference. As the sunlight seeps between the buildings in downtown, we will not forget Malia, not even one day. A sea of pink begins to flood the streets. They came by the thousands wearing the favorite color of the little girl, chanting a battle cry. They march from City Hall to the county jail, where Malia's stepfather remains locked in a cell, suspected in her death. Hug your children. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your children you love them. Few among the thousands had ever met Malia, but it doesn't matter. But I just believe that it's a great thing. To them, Malia was everyone's child. It's about Malia. Mary Clark brought her godson. Justice for Malia. To the last breath in my body, sir, no child deserved what, what she got, sir. Beautiful little girl. You know, the system failed Malia. They say alleged signs of abuse weren't taken seriously, and those that may have been noticed were taken too lightly. For Malia, they admit it's too late. Moving forward, they don't want to see it happen again. We are responsible for doing everything we can to make sure that a situation of this kind never happens again in this city, in this state, or in this country. We're going to get a moment of silence for Malia. From downtown. Standing for Houston, I'm Matt Doherty, KHU 11 News. Mr. Turner has turned the exterior lights of City Hall pink in honor of Malia. It was her favorite color. As you heard, the mayor said the community must make a promise to protect all our children. Stepfather, Darian Vance, remains in jail, charged with tampering with evidence in Malia's death. He told community activist Quan L. X that he was the one who dumped Malia's body in Arkansas, but he would not elaborate as to how she died. Okay, so that's basically where we are uh, in the case with Malia Davis, but some things that I want to get to the bottom of and to at least open a dialogue and a discussion about beyond the uh, normal 
everyday discussion regarding situations like this where children are abused is um, the trauma involved that allows a mom to ver basically go feral and wild on her own offspring also the history involving the trauma and abuse of our children uh, the influence from um, outer entities beyond our control onto how we treat our children and also um, how worship ancient worship um, has infiltrated current day worship even in our subconscious and, and how it allows the neglect and the abuse of our children <sighs> Malia Davis case is very horrific um, without question and the reason why this strikes home with me it, it's a myriad of reasons I won't go into all of them um, but this little girl actually looks like my niece when she was like the same exact age and it just it, it sends a shiver down my spine and what I've noticed through my own experiences and also witnessing the other experiences of other women and other girls is that one common factor when it comes to violence against children child abuse um, child neglect is that the mother often plays a side role and not just a side role but a very influential role and very often as we know um, they're victims themselves it's like some type of psyop is going on with their brain but how everybody including the mother fails the children just just look this beautiful little girl her mama is here uh, with the ugly cry face we see two generations here if we add because that's the grandmother this is Malia Davis's mom and then if we count the baby girl that's three generations of fucked upness because best you believe a girl this thirsty the mama didn't just come out of uh, didn't just come out of nowhere that's she's she's got some stories to tell about her own experiences as a girl and then not just as raggedy as grandma but daddy dearest and when I say daddy dearest I'm talking about the biological father look at the experiences that Malia Davis has gone through she was only four years of age when she died was murdered but look at pictures of her in her little young life just like uh, a year ago if I'm not mistaken this baby girl if that long she was already in the hospital because her wig been split open and I'm not saying that to be funny her skull was actually cracked look at her with black eyes contusions and shit eyes swollen but this unfunctioning worthless non-helping co-parent right here which is her blood father is sitting here smiling I can't help but wonder why this cat um, didn't want to just blow up everything I don't see how somebody just tell you repeatedly because she's been in the hospital more than once she's had to be given up to um, she was given up to child pro protective services because of suspected abuse in the home more than once I don't see how you look at your baby girl so little and so fragile like this and just not ready to go to war with anybody that you even suspect that is culpable and I say to you that the reason is is because this com this community doesn't see this image black and female as um as precious 
Now we've heard this in very different scenarios. We hear it, this conversation talked about and feel free to give yourself a, a, a break when you hear these conversations. Feel free to cleanse your um, your spirit. Feel free to cleanse your aura. Because uh, like I said earlier, sometimes you need a break from these type of conversations because it can be too heavy. But at the same time, even though it's heavy, we it's something that we cannot just exact um act like doesn't exist and we cannot ignore it ignore it in totality you can get a break from it but you can't ignore it because you never know when that's your niece that's gonna be fucked up like this you don't know when it could be your child that could be fucked up like this or um interfacing with another child with this type of energy on them we have to be vigilant and we have to care about our children but everybody in Malia Davis um, life failed her um, the grandma the dad the mom of course um, I mean look at her 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 face is swollen I, I, I just can't wait till they get to expose the evidence that they have so that they can bring this monster to justice that did this but the monster that did it is not just the boyfriend here and when I saw his first like little mug shots and shit I was like oh my god this dude is through he's ugly as fuck and then I'm looking at the mama like look at her fat ass disgusting old desperate ass bitch you know I'm thinking all these horrible things but then I'm looking at that little social media picture. I believe this is on either her Facebook. This was from a Facebook or a Twitter page. But looking at the two of them, just on the surface, Darion Vince doesn't look horribly unattractive. He doesn't look bad. Not necessarily my type, but he doesn't look bad. But there's something dead about these eyes here. There's something dead. There's something very telling. Something very thirsty about this man. But on the surface, you know, he looked like a regular, a regular black dude. You know, I guess. Um, then you look at the female here, the mom. I'm like, wow. On the earlier pictures, she's just looking like a a, a troubled fat ass. But, and I'm being mean towards her for good reason. Um, she, she doesn't deserve much mercy at this point um but aside from her her obvious weight problem i'm like wow this is actually a pretty girl though she's very pretty so a man that's not ugly he just looks like a regular dude a girl that's attractive and pretty what the fuck is going on in their worlds that would make them feast on the life of a little girl and that's what we're gonna discuss i knew something really big was about to drop when i first saw the um the the activist quanel x give his commentary because at first he was defending and standing by the mom, Brittany Bowens. He was standing by her like, oh, we just need the facts. We just need the facts. And at the last minute, like a day or two before the authorities found the little girl's body, um, he was he was he was basically changing his tune. But I mentioned in previous videos, like this dude looked like he done seen the Grim Reaper. Like the life force has been um, taken from him uh, for about 10 or 15 years. Um, this this was extremely heavy. Listen to this, y'all. Ma'am, I know you're hurting and you're grieving She's right not now. Gonna say anything. But we're trying to understand She's why you wouldn't anything. bring this forward to She's police, these critical details when your daughter is missing. I mean, that is a big question. Look at the fake cry. It's a big question. And mom's on a lot of soul searching right now. A lot of soul searching, but I've been involved in many of these cases like this. And I thank God it was shared with me so that we can help law enforcement increase and intensify now their time for a manhunt. No longer person of interest. This man needs to be captured. He needs to be arrested. Has he tried to contact mom? No, not at all. 
When was the last and time you had contact? And he won't respond to any of her text messages. He won't respond to any. She's been trying to contact him for days with zero response. When was their last contact with each other? Last week, when she, right when she came home. And shortly after she got back to the city is when he stopped communicating and contacting with the mother. And Brittany, when's the last time you spoke to Elise Maria? When's the last time you talked to your little girl? Listen, listen, mom is not perfect. She's made some mistakes. But my own needs to share this hard information without sharing with you for law enforcement. We believe it's time for a man hunt for this woman. Okay? All right. Uh, so when do you plan on sharing these details directly to the police? People think you are partly to blame for what happened. 25 minutes after their sit-down with Lynn Cannon, Quan Alex says Brittany Bowens admitted talking with Darian Vince, the suspect in her four-year-old daughter's disappearance, after his arrest. Details so sensitive he gave them only to police. And it also said to me when we was riding in my car, what she believed really happened to Malia. At that point, I knew what needed to be done. And so I arranged to quickly go and meet as soon as I could with the investigators at the highest levels of this case and share with them everything that we had learned and discovered. Speaking for the first time since cutting ties with Bowens, Quanell told us Brittany's sister asked him to help Malia's mom manage media and her emotions. Two days on the job, Quanell saw red flags. He claimed sources in Brittany's own family told him troubling details about Malia's care. And in private, Quanell says he saw a different Brittany than the one seen on TV. Uh, there was not a lot of tears. She was always calm, fluid, clear. Now, whenever there was a public thing, she would break down. Still the activist hung around, he claims, to get information he feared police could not. Bowens did not answer calls or return our messages. Law enforcement sources did confirm that Quanell told prosecutors about Brittany's words, her behavior, and his suspicions. Quanell does not believe Brittany knows where to find Malia, but her former advocate is bothered by other details he says she shared with him. She knows the truth, and she knows that eventually she's going to have to answer for that. Did y'all see the fake cry? That's guilt on that mother. It's guilt on the mother, y'all. But we shall continue. And here's the grandma. Grandma. One of the many relatives. Now, to her credit, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, she did, they did reach out to CPS before to try to get custody at least temporarily of the children um, and we're not allowed to keep them I will give her that credit but she is still aware of what was going on with her grandchildren so these are past events um, a week or so ago um, but I, I, I'm, I got my eye on this case and I'm, I'm side eyeing everybody look at her look at the demeanor Going on with that and um, anyhow hopefully we'll hear something soon I know time is at the essence why is y'all focused this area I'm not sure well I'm not sure honestly there's a lot of things that it's not clear to me so I can't really speak on what anyone says because I'm really it's not clear to me what's going mm. on it's never clear to them when shit's about to hit the fan. Everybody wants to play the innocent role. Even when you know dirt is going on, everybody tries to wipe their hands clean and tries to play the modern, look like the innocent, concerned person when we know that abuse has been going on. I don't know if it's really important for anybody to, to help. Uh, and can you talk to us about you know, extra search, people who are searching right now, how thankful and grateful are I'm very grateful. Um, it's good that they're out there looking for her, but that park is really big. But Brittany and I went out there yesterday. And Interesting. Brittany and her. Brittany probably already knowing that the child is dead because as we know now, um, she mentioned Brittany later on that um, so-called stepdad, fiance, um, second baby daddy, whatever, whatever, dusty, ashy, ugly ass dude. <laughs> was cleaning the apartment with bleach and was super cleaning the apartment. So the mom 
is aware of this and then you know later we come to speculate now that he was probably trying to clean up blood how much did the mother know how much did the grandmother know was this all an act did they already know that the girl was dead but yet they're out looking for the body or looking for Malia I won't say the body but they're playing it off y'all they're playing it off and we walked for miles yeah. in that park, mm -hmm. hoping we, if we were to see Malia. You have no idea what we've been doing that nobody knows anything about. Mm -hmm. So you were at 59 and Green yesterday. Nobody knows what we were doing. Yes, we were out there. We were just walking around looking. We went to that park because we wanted to see, mm -hmm. possibly, because they said it was the largest park around there. I don't really know the area. So we decided to go over there and just walk. And we walked all through there. We did miles in there. Why did you want to take, why, why did you tell Maria you sort of make her own? Is that what you meant? They were probably in that park hatching up what details they would give authorities. I'm very suspicious of this case, y'all. I'm, I'm, you just don't know. Because that's where I'm from. That's where a lot of the relatives are. Uh, my sister, Karen, is better known as Mimi, and her husband, Ronnie, which is better known as Uncle Do to Malia, and they love them. We have a big supportive family from Louisiana. We're not alone. Did you talk, you said you talked to her last week, or past week, when was the last time you spoke with you? Uh, I, I want to say Monday, because Brittany was flying out Tuesday, and she was at my house washing clothes. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised? Mm -hmm. Yes. Brenda Bowens. I'm Malia's grandmother. Brenda Bowens. Bre <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, B-R-E-N-D-A. Look at the bo body language. It's, it's not looking worried. She's looking scared. Like she knows some shit is about to drop, she, but she's trying to play it off. Read the body language. He is out of the hospital. He's doing okay, I guess. I can't really comment on anybody else besides myself and Brittany. Have you ever seen him before? No, not really. You know, he's still helping police. He's I have I have no idea. I honestly cannot answer that question. I have no idea. And I, I know from Brittany's social media statement. Okay, enough for her. We shall continue. So continuing on, I want you guys to pay attention. Uh, there is a uh, there is precedent for a lot of kids that have ended up missing over many years in this country, but recently especially with media being as prevalent as it is pay attention there are so many little kids that are ending up missing i can name i got them written down here let's see one two three four five at least five or six that i can just name off off top um but if you guys don't remember i want to jog your memory and this is trigger warning trigger warning trigger warning um, if you need to go get settled in your household, <laughs> as we discuss this topic, um, and you're just getting off work, kick your shoes off, get your mind prepared, get your incense going so we can keep the cleansing energy um, right at the, at the ready when you need it. Um, but it, again, it's something that we need to talk about, okay? So I'm not trying to sadden um other people but i just want us to be honest about what is going on with our kids but anyway it's really weird a play on these different names of these children that seemingly are being sacrificed to unknown forces it's almost as if the parents are acting like they can't even help themselves um when it's coming to the deaths and the the abuse of their children's um just a few years ago and i always remembered this case because i thought it was so fucked up it was yet another little girl with the same last name davis 
but her name was Shania Davis. Let me pull up her picture. And this is the little girl. Her mom, here's her raggedy ass um, oven that she came from. Wicked, wicked woman. Hold on, let me see if I can get a bigger picture of her. Here we go, we got Shania Davis. Here's her raggedy mother that um, was from North Carolina. And she gave this baby girl up for prostituting. She owed a drug debt. This little baby girl, same last name, is is, is so creepy. Malia Davis, Shania Davis. And I'm, fi I'm, I'm finding that a lot of these babies have ah or ya in the ending name it's just kind of freaky because that ending has it has meaning uh referring to the divine and then and, and again it's almost like some weird type of um sacrifice that is going along with these children a lot of times the sacrifice is not only um, involving the murder of the child but it's also involving the sexual violation of the child and the story regarding this case was quite gruesome this mother was a monster I personally think she was mad at the child's father who was white um, it didn't it, it, it was kind of like a crapshoot situation this, um, how they she ended up pregnant I believe he was just some dude like she just met with they didn't really have a long term situation going and she probably resented the child and didn't really want her but if you guys were to see the details um and i'm gonna try to keep this video as clean as possible even though it's gonna be very hard but you can see the perpetrator here let me get let you guys get a good um glimpse of him okay here goes the creep he violated that baby so bad i remember i had nightmares like for a while behind it um this one this happened a few years ago his mom her mom gave him gave her to him shania davis because she owed him some drug uh, some money for some drugs that he gave her and she couldn't pay so she was like okay you can take my daughter um this man took her to a hotel they had the the video footage of him uh carrying the little girl into the hotel and she was never seen alive again her body was dumped um she was violated in so many different ways uh it, it was disgusting but i'm not gonna just give all the details here it was pretty nasty i'll make sure i, I link all the links for those of you that want to know and i i just want them all to be put out their misery and be put to sleep they don't deserve to breathe air and like I said a lot of these kids names lately have been ending in ah ya um some type of dang these trucks going hold on sorry y'all trucks outside and everything but um ya and ah which I, like I said before has a, a meaning related to the divine it's some type of like ritual that has been building up for a while um yeah we heard of the 17 month old let me see if i get her picture yeah this is the baby girl um nariah nariah brown she was 17 months her mama left her with some food she claimed she knew from childhood um left him with her for a short span of time while she went to go run an errand and she comes back her body her baby's uh, body is lifeless it's been sexually abused the baby ends up dying Naraya um, again something related to the divine um, I was just 17 months old she was just learning how to talk Friday police say the toddler died from an assault that happened here at this motel on Midlothian Turnpike behind me her mom says she left her daughter with someone she trusted while she went to run an errand. Naraya Brown was born a preemie. For three months, she fought to live. Her mom, Asia, never missed a day, pledging to her baby girl that she would never leave her side, a promise she kept. I was 
giving my baby CTR in the backseat. Until the very end. Because that night she wasn't breathing. Naraya, 17 months old, was pronounced dead Friday after arriving at VCU's critical care unit from Chippenham Hospital on Wednesday. Crime Insider sources say she was sexually assaulted in a room at the Southside Motel. Police confirm a person of interest in this case is locked up. CI sources tell me he was arrested by the U.S. Marshals on a probation violation. Because I was going to always, always protect her. She never did anything to anybody. She wasn't a mean baby. She was loving. She she would go up to people. She didn't even know to hug them and, and smile and play with them. Naraya had a radiant personality. Mm. A little girl who loved Disney Junior. She loved puppy dog pals. She loved dogs. Anytime she went in her room, she would be like woof woof. And she was just learning how to talk. Naraya was her only child. Asia saying she's emotionally distraught and will lean on family and friends for support and love to help her carry on without her smiling and happy baby girl. And uh, oh, oh my god. Her tears seem somewhat genuine. However, it also, these these occurrences are speaking to the stupidity of a lot of, a lot of black women. They're very naive as into knowing that a lot of sisters have gone through trauma themselves, yet they'll suspect that nobody's going to try to traumatize their own offspring. It, it, it makes no sense. Even if you weren't traumatized yourself, you see the situation with 60, 70%, 80% of the girls that you know, but yet you're going to leave your young defenseless child with someone that you haven't been engaged with for years. You say you knew him when you was young, but y'all just now getting cool, so you really don't know this dude all like that. We're, we're leaving children and putting them in vulnerable positions. We're raised and socialized to believe, to trust black male beings or male beings, period, but especially black male beings because they look like you and, and at no point should you ever really be suspicious. And this is costing us. This is costing us. This is costing our children. And there are more cases. Here's another baby. Her name's Janaya. Janaya Aaronin Brooks. This was a three-year-old. She's another one. Killed recently. Like, what the hell type of sacrifice is going on? This baby girl, I believe, was in Georgia. Y'all. This is crazy. And a 20-year-old stepfather quote-unquote charged with child molestation rape aggravated sodomy aggravated battery first deg degree ch um cruelty to children look at his baby's face just innocent as hell and again look at the ending of that name janaya now i'm not going to say that every single child that um that has been harmed name ends like this but it's it's weird how some of these a lot of these profile cases are coming up with babies whose names are ending like this. Janiah Brooks. It's horrible. Rape of a, a sodomy? Sodomy, y'all. Three-year-old. Come on, son. Oh, my God. Here's one more story. This baby girl's name, Aaliyah. And we know the, the tragedy that surrounds the name Aaliyah. I hate to say it. Um... In black culture, we just know it. But this little baby girl, her name was Aaliyah. Again, that ending um, suffix basically on the on the name. She was three year old, um, killed in Las Vegas recently. Um, uh, the stories are endless. They are endless. three-year-old is dead, leaving her family with many questions. The 13 Action News reporter Leah Pizzetti right now joins us live with a breakdown of what police say happened. 
Trisha Todd, little Aaliyah's dad and stepmom say that when they gave the child to her mother on Friday, she was fine. Then just 24 hours later, police were responding to this apartment complex behind me and they were living their worst nightmare. A family gathered outside of a funeral home. She was a beautiful, loving, kind baby. Grieving the loss of three-year-old Aaliyah Cameron. It doesn't feel real to me. My daughter is gone. She just celebrated her third birthday, adored Minnie Mouse, and loved her baby sister. This should have never happened. Why? That's all we want to know. Yeah, that's what we all want to know. That's what we all want to know is why. <sighs> I'm telling y'all, it's some type of sacrifice going on. And we were all her um, horrified to hear about this story. This baby girl, her name is Zoe Correa. So the last name ends in that ya sound. But also, her first name means the word Zoe means life. Interesting. Life. But this little baby girl was put to death. Her dad locked her in a burning car. And this child looked like she's been suffering some type of trauma even way before. Look at those woeful eyes. Her child, man, she looks like she's seen some shit we can't even imagine, y'all. So for you to bury your head in the sand and just ignore like, well, and don't get me wrong, we have our own shit to heal through. We can't take on the burdens of the world. But I, and, and, and we can't all go adopt children. We can't go, we, we don't all have the money to go um, support all children financially. Um, but one thing we are able to do in the assistance of abused and murdered children as at least speak to them and make their stories known let's not hide these stories on and, and sweep them under the rug at, um, and make it seem like the the child should be shamed because they themselves were abused or murdered these kids carry no shame on what has happened to them the shame is, is is strictly on their caretakers their abusers their parents and everybody around them that failed them and that's what i'm determined to do because i think a, a lot of times we're just comfortable with these children not having a voice it's just way too many people that have failed them there's just way too many stories um, way too many monsters um, and let's not forget the, the, the stories of um, teenagers like Kanika Jenkins I was just thinking about her man Chicago used to be one of my favorite cities and I still like Chicago but yo the, <laughs> when that girl was found in that freezer it literally scared the crap out of me like literally scared the crap out of me like i'm not going to chicago for like a good long while now i'm not going to um be traveling to some of these cities um by myself if i don't have anyone with me they're ki kidnapping broads out here i mean <clears throat> And, and and if you are a child oh my god we have to keep our eyes on them um in the Kanika Jenkins situation even though she was older it made me think this this one dude that I watched on YouTube he recently even said if you notice all the scary movies shout out to Hassan Campbell he recently said if you look at all the scary movies some of the best classics that we always get when we want to be scared and, and um, get some popcorn and whatever and what have you they always ch center around the murder of children some type of child sacrifice some type of um, situation where children are engaged in um, some type of sexual activity or their first sexual experience but it's always like the murder of children look at um 
or the possession of children. Look at the exorcist. It involved a child. Look at um, Carrie. It involved a, a naive child that was just burgeoning into her, her womanhood. He brought up like Chucky um, killing people, a child, um, Michael Myers always killing kids, Freddy Krueger always killing kids. Um, just countless movie classics where the sacrifice ch uh, of children is the theme. And there's some of the be um, the most favored movies like of all time. And it's like in bed in the culture. So it's no wonder that years later in 2019, we're almost like our hearts are dead collectively when we hear stories like this. It's, we don't care because she had, we've been watching um, Friday the 13th ever since we was like 13 years of age. So think about that. Something is a muck and something is very wrong. When I looked up um, child sacrifice, I was trying to get some historical data. And you have to really dig uh, to get at the root and to find some, some historical stuff. You know, certain things they put right in front of our face, like in entertainment. We see the murder of children. We see the rape of children. Um, but when we're trying to get to the roots of it, like, okay, where did this come from? Then, you know, everybody's playing dumb. So you have to really like it's like pe putting the pieces of a puzzle together but when i looked up just the the meaning of child sacrifice it'll tell you that it's the ritualistic killing of children in order to please or appease god or some supernatural being in order to achieve a desired result as such it is a form of human sacrifice the practice has received a considerable opposition throughout history and I, it has often um, become a target for those engaged in criticism of religion. Child sacrifice is thought to be an extreme extension of the idea that the more the uh, the more important the object of sacrifice, the more deviant or the more devout, pardon me, the more devout the person giving it up is. And I think that's what's going on with black women. They feel like, look at this, child sacrifice is thought to be an extreme extension of the idea that the more important the object of sacrifice is, the more devout the person giving it up is. So a lot of times these women will put these children in front of them. Like, look, I'm giving you access to the fruit of my womb. I let you tell it what to do. I let you boss it around. I let you do what thou wilt to to he or she um you get to abuse it at a in a you know to your heart's um desire don't you love me even more look what i have given you i've given you my children the, of course these women don't think that they're thinking this way consciously it's in their subconscious but their behavior speaks volumes and this is exactly what they're doing they feel as if they give access to their like um say for instance they got a new boyfriend but they got a year uh, a, a six month old first of all if you just broke up with a dude and you got a six month old that means you just gave birth why are you even dating again right now anyway but that's a whole nother conversation but these women who just gave birth went through something big a huge experience with their physical and mental bodies and they're already engaging in romantic situations with new dudes and they feel as if they give the dude access to the child that they had or had before then the guy should automatically appreciate them more it's it's very backwards it's uh um it's very um oh what's the word it's barbaric i'll i'll just say that it's barbaric it's antiquated it's it's and it speaks to weakness in the soul of these women that do these things and the sad thing is a lot of women that do these things they think that they're normal they don't think that they have help they that they need help they don't understand that uh, most times they're victims of tra transgenerational trauma. You guys can look this um, phenomenon up, but it's affecting so many black um, black women. 
Um, just to read a little snippet here, it says, in general, black Americans who suffer uh, from mental illness are resistant to receiving treatment due to stigma, negative con conceptions, and fear of discrimination. This reduces the number of those affected to seek help. Not seeking treatment allows the symptoms to compound and further internalization of distress continues, which it does, worsening the mental health of the individual. Those affected by race-based trauma otherwise do not seek treatment, treatment, not only because of stigma, stigma, but because of fear that the medical professional uh, will not understand their perspective as a disenfranchised minority. And see, there's a lot of shame in uh, mental illness, and a lot of these women are suffering um, from... the memory of being abused themselves being embedded in their psyche. So when you're going out to a psychologist or psychiatrist, don't get me wrong, some of the so-called therapists and stuff, they can be predatory themselves. So we have to be very careful on the practitioners that we choose um, to help us. But if you choose somebody uh, that has a, a good track record and that you feel comfortable with some type of connection to, um, you really can get um, really good help, the help that you need. But if you don't think anything is wrong with you, if you're suppressing a lot of emotion, you're not going to seek help. Um, and just to continue, it says, due to the recent identification and research of transgenerational trauma affecting black Americans and other racial um, minorities combined with the uh, existing stigma of mental health there is a lack of research and consequently treatment however lack of treatment can be attributed to the misdiagnosis of the aforementioned symptoms signs of tra trauma exhibited in black children are labeled as behavioral or educational uh, disabilities that ring a bell a lot of our children are being diagnosed with ADHD um, attention deficit disorders and whatnot um, allowing the trauma to go untreated while trauma symptoms often manifest as other mental illnesses such as depression and anxiety the larger diagnosed diagnosis often goes untreated talks about how enslavement and domestic violence and sexual abuse and extreme poverty are also sources of trauma that can be transferred um, to subsequent generations. Listen to that, ladies. Enslavement and slavery, civil and domestic violence, sexual abuse and extreme poverty are also sources of trauma that can be transferred to subsequent generations. That's why you see a lot of us hollering from the, um, the, the rooftops, watch your womb, watch your room do not make the same mistake that your mama made that your grandmother made and your great grandmother made we have more resources at least right now we do than any other generation of women we have access to birth control in most states you can still get an abortion um we have um access to to condoms we can practice abstinence with so many different resources available there's other things and hobbies that you can get into outside of just having sex if you like to write write if you like to write poetry write poetry if you like to make videos make videos if you like to go painting go painting i've gone painting um i like to dance i like to go for rides i like to go for walks i like to travel there's things you can do outside of copulation and sexual exchange which can result in a chi into a child that you're not ready for okay because a lot of us have been born from the wombs and the loins of pained suffering individuals and they do pass on that pain and suffering to us we have to recognize it in ourselves so we can spare future generations there's proof that there's um, there could be epigenetic transmission, so we can pass down this shit through the genes, y'all. And of course, we know that transmission can be um, transmuted, or yeah, just transferred during pregnancy. 
you're the carrier you're the the human being that carries life for almost a, an entire year you think that child is not picking up on your vibration if you've been raped and molested if you was one of the three-year-olds that was raped by your mama's boyfriend but you survived it fought, survived it you didn't get killed you don't think that that energy has not um been passed down to you if your mom suffered something like that or if you are the person that suffered that and you survived it, that it can't be passed down, that energy cannot be passed down to your child. And a lot of times when you're a person that has suffered that type of stuff, you yourself um, w will subconsciously attract, if you're not careful, male beings that have are, are vibrating on a, a similar frequency. And then here y'all go doing the bump and uglies together and, and you create create a child in a vortex of pain so these are things that we're gonna have to look at so we don't have baby girls that are ending up dead and sometimes it's the little boys too they're not spared just because they're little boys but it's it's of epidemic proportions with the little girls it's almost it, like i said it's some sacrifice shit going on y'all open your eyes here's a study that i found in the psych psychiatric clinic of north america it was a study um in their library about the compulsion to repeat trauma repeat the trauma that you've suffered and uh y'all it's deep i'll link it at the bottom of this video but oh my goodness the 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 depths of how the mind is just traumatized it says that you're comp um a lot of times you're compelled to harm others look at this criminals have often been physically or sexually abused as children they've studied young boys have been brutally, brutally physically abused. Um, they studied some guys that were sodomized by relatives. <sighs> the, some have been found to self-mutilate themselves. <sighs> Self-destructiveness. This is not what you want to create. This is not the energy you want to create from your womb. Even if you have to give up motherhood completely. I'm all for it. I'm, I'm all for um, less black be babies being born if it means that less black babies are going to be harmed. I don't care what nobody says. I, I'm, I'm off that shit from the civil rights movement um, where they put into the minds of our mothers that um, just, you know, you're going to populate for the movement. And these women were following that madness when they themselves were victims that have not healed and they gave birth to a nation of hurting and uh, victimized people. It talks about self-destruction being common in abused children. Let's say for instance, Malia Davis, bless her heart, survived. Um, if she had not gotten um, extreme, extreme, extreme intense therapy, and a mental and spiritual healing she would have more than likely went down the same road and path and so many of them have look at this it says re-victimization is a consistent finding victims of rape are likely or more likely to be raped and women who were physically or sexually abused as children are more likely to be abused as adult, adults victims of child sexual abuse are at high risk of becoming prostitutes says a lot of prostitutes are um, victims of incest. The study is deep. I was like, oh my God, my head started hurting. And then of course the trauma bonds. Increased attachment in the face of danger. I'm telling you this, this, this study was deep. And this is because these children, when they're children, they were always faced with extreme danger. 
And so they were looking for that saving grace, that saving force where no one came to help Malia or Nariah. Nobody came to um, help Aaliyah Cameron or Shania Davis, Janiah Brooks. Nobody came. Zoe. Nobody came. Here's another article about intergenerational trauma. It's in the Social Work Today uh, online magazine. I found this part interesting when I was talking about historical trauma. Where's that part? Right here. It says, Foster, who works with the African-American community in Pittsburgh, constantly sees the effects of historical trauma. Historical trauma has morphed into a myriad of contemporary trauma, she says. Over time, the social policies, the reaction to the, back, the black community, the racism that occurs, it has created a cumulative trauma. You don't get through one trauma and then it dissipates. They just keep building on top of each other. See, we have to have a stop gap put in place. That's why the birth control is important. That's why the abstinence is important. That's why the waiting to date is important. Um, putting off sex altogether for a good while. Um, open up, uh, Opening up options to other groups until this group can get some shit together um, because something of some equal or opposite force has to intervene in order for the ship to get right. And if the ship can't get right, then the ship does not deserve to exist. Says Foot Foster notes that the violence experienced in many of today's black communities, the way children are taught to behave, the over incarceration of African Americans, and the un or under punishments or under punished killings of African American boys are part of the effects and evolution of historical trauma. Notice it says, even in this article, which is a psychological. Um, a, a, a article based on psychology is talking about the underpunished killings of African American boys, but no real big highlights of the underpunishments or the unrecognition, the lack of recognition of the killing of African American girls. There are girls being uh, just coming up missing. I forget how many each year that they're saying is missing what was it, it was some insane number like 50,000 or something it's a whole lot of kids that are ending up um, missing a lot are being forced into uh being being kidnapped for prostitution and put into child trafficking and that's why i say without the healing of the mother or something to force her to stop producing offspring that she cannot love and is unwilling to love and doesn't have the resources and the tools to love then she is the first abuser because she is abusing by not protecting she is the first human trafficker even before um the the abusive men get to the child she's the first trafficker she sets her doomed offspring up for failure because she's unable to properly love them. And look at this article here. The essence of evil. Sex with children has become big business in America. And it's true. It absolutely has. It absolutely has. And this was just written like two weeks ago. It says, consider this, every two minutes a child is exploited in the sex industry. According to U.S. Today, adults practice, um, purchase children for sex at least 2.5 million times a year in, in the United States. We didn't say Africa. We didn't say India. Not South, uh, Saudi Arabia or Afghanistan or South America. No, 2.5 million times a year in the United States alone. And then it asks, who buys child children for sex? And this, this lawnmower will be going off when I'm trying to record. But it's asking, who buys a child for sex? 
otherwise ordinary men from all walks of life. They could be your co-worker, doctor, pastor, spouse. It says that 7,200 men, half of them in their 30s, seek to purchase sex with adolescent girls each month. Averaging at least 300 a day. Y'all, it's an emergency. It's an emergency. We have to put a stop to the sacrifice. And the, the it says this is not a problem found in only big cities. It's happening everywhere under our noses in suburbs, cities, and towns across the nation. The only way to find, this is what the article says, the only way to not find this in an American city is to simply not look for it. It says that there's 100 to 150,000 underage child sex workers in the U.S. These girls are not volunteering to be sex slaves. They're being lured, forced, trafficked, trafficked into, and in most cases, they have no choice. Do I have to remind you of the mom? Where's her stupid self at? Where's her picture? This child's mother, Shania Davis, this mother gave her child up. Put her into prost basically prostituted her child for for drugs, and you know what, y'all? I've heard that the um the incidence of this is even especially increasing in like rural areas, like in places we would think of as like oh the country south or you know like the Carolinas and stuff like that, Virginia, where drug problems are increasing, like with meth. And did you guys know that the meth problem is increasing with African Americans? I used to think that was just a drug for white folks. We heard about all the stories, especially Dick Gregory talked about how a lot of white white folks, pardon me, I'm getting tired <clears throat> and I've been sick today, but um, <clears throat> Dick Gregory used to talk about the heroin use of, um, of white people in this country, but actually um, in the last few years, the heroin and meth use has been like being raised by leaps and bounds and being used by black folks and we have when we have increased usages of drugs and i'm going to get into that in another video we have mind altering substances that can control the mind of the person that is using it and can make them make some um or encourage them to make some awful decisions I mean, it's a recipe for disaster. If you're an abused child, if you've been neglected, you have this open wound in your spirit where your mother was not, not there to neglect. Um, your mother was basically neglecting you, but she was not there to validate you, to heal you, to raise you up in love. And you didn't have a father that was there to also validate you and give you a feeling of uh, solidarity and protection in your life. You're this wounded being you're going to be more open to using substances and on top of using that substance that's altering your your brain chemistry and your brain matter you have this aching healing wounded heart and this empty spirit you are just ripe for all kinds of weird mental illness uh bad thoughts and actual bad entities and spirits entering into your mind where you're next thing you know you know you're doing you're on some fuck shit selling your kid to the next pedophile down the street for a, a bump of uh some crack or some rock or some meth or some heroin it's really crazy. These women are turning out to be the savages peddling their children into a demonic situation. They're the ones that are encouraging the sacrifice of their children because of unhealed trauma within themselves. They've opened up a portal that womb in their that wound in their heart. And that wound in their womb, W-O-M-B, the wound in their womb is inviting so many toxic frequencies and so many toxic spirits that it's just 
it's like an altar that they place their children on and, and, and welcome the sacrifice just for a temporary um, cessation of pain. Like, oh, if I do this, then my pain will stop, at least temporarily. Yeah, it is that deep. I know it sounds horrifying, but it's a it's a it's a horror story in 3D. You don't have to watch Michael Myers. You don't have to watch um, Chucky. You can just look out your window and turn or turn on the news, and you'll get the latest horror story in your own neighborhood. I'm gonna be cutting this video short. I know it's super long, but I just had to get this all off my chest, and then I'm gonna visit some other topics on my channel for a while that doesn't mean i'm not going to revisit this child um this topic i absolutely will when and, and if i feel that it's necessary again our children need a voice um and i would have hated to have been where absolutely nobody spoke for me um as a child because i had myself a neglectful Negle a neglectful mom and it was a bad situation so I, I don't want to see other children go through things that I have seen um, in my own life and also in other people's lives I don't want to see more children being born in the 2000s going through some shit that kids have gone in past times it's bullshit but look at this child trafficking is on the rise women and child trafficking if for those of you um, that didn't catch my last video about the woman being stalked in broad daylight, go check that out. These du dudes are out here stoke stalking grown women and, and putting the fear of God in grown women. So do, what do you think? What defenses do little kids have when the women are having trouble defending themselves? And the t human trafficking is bad in the United States, but look at it worldwide, 24.9 million people, and it's probably more than that, estimated worldwide. There's a big sacrifice going on worldwide. The majority of victims are women and girls. Look at that. Y'all better put your glasses on. You cannot hide from this. You cannot hide you can protect yourself get your energies up spiritually you can also get get armed physically in the physical world because we have to remain present in what's going on we have to um be cognizant of what's going on but at the same time as you're protecting yourself you can't uh, uh, ignore what's going on around you the traffic victims are sexually exploited and with this increase in drug usage the, the the victimization of children sadly is going to grow unless there's some type of stop put to it so yeah I'll link these articles at the bottom so you can see this is a problem this is a problem Malia Davis Sally is not the only the only one and sadly um, human sacrifice has been an issue for like ever civilizations that we've worshipped and considered like supreme um, because they had technology way back in the day um, I, I was disheartened to see the lengths the societies would go to to so-called get rid of bad juju or bad situations let's say the crops died or the weather was bad a lot of these fools would sacrifice do human sacrifice and I would say that the reason why we're seeing an uptick in a lot of countries like the United States and elsewhere, just like they did in ancient societies, is because the elite, they have a feeling that Rome is falling. There's pro and we've heard Dick Gregory talk about it and we've heard other um, people that consider themselves like in the know 
um, activists and the like talk about a, 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 a pending financial crisis unlike anything that we've ever seen before. Um, I've heard predictions of bad weather. If we thought Hurricane Katrina was bad, um, I, I'm hearing <sighs> predictions of bad weather and d disease. Um, spikes increasing, violence spikes, violence on the increase. And so when we have things like this, could this be why sacrifices are being made of children? Because as I'm showing you, it's not beyond humanity to support um, sacrifice the limit living for some deranged reason they feel like that'll if you sacrifice the living that'll spare the rest of the um, the rest of co the collective and, and uh, it's ludicrous <laughs> but um this these are things that human beings are, are on record as to being involved in. So it's no quink dink. Um, I don't know um, how many of you are, are aware, but they're finding serial killers in Detroit and Chicago. That's just breaking a few weeks ago, or pardon me, a few days ago. So we got serial killers out here. I'm telling you the frequency is crazy. Serial killers out here. Uh, mamas are, are, are selling their kids to demons. Um, we have child trafficking on the rise. Drug usage on the rise. It's just a terrible, terrible energy. And my... I don't have all the answers. But my advice would be for us to work, uh, work on... To wake up, first of all, and to work on raising our um, individual frequencies so that we can raise the collective vibration. Because if the collective has a higher vibration, if we become self-aware and not so depressed, because all this depressed energy is also working in favor of the elite so that they can we can do their bidding. They don't even have to use their own hand. They can uh, make it the situation so bad where we crumble and break on the inside and we see parents mothers basically cannibalizing their children and sacrificing them to um to, to uh, dark energies wherever they can find them um but if we protect ourselves raise our own frequencies and our own vibrations then that could be a start to where we can see light, we can see hope. And if we can um, meditate and heal our own traumas and stop making the repeated uh, decisions that our, our foremothers and forefathers made, uh, making the same mistakes as if it's going to change just because we did it, knowing that generation after generation and generations before us have made the same mistakes. It's not going to change if you don't change the course that you're on. So rest in peace to all these babies. Rest in peace to all these babies. <sighs> And may their voices be heard. And let's not turn a deaf ear. When the, ch when the spirits of our own children are speaking to us. So I'm going to end it here. I know it's a long video. Um, feel free to rewind and go back to parts as you need be. And I'll link, um, I'll link articles at the bottom. And I'd like to hear your thoughts on what's going on around us in this country and our community and worldwide um do you feel like i feel that there's some type of very dark evil presence that's being forced upon us in this society harsh that hardship is being manipulated energies are being manipulated have you seen the effects in your own cities and do you think 
that a lot of us are being blocked from um, discussing this information. Perhaps, you know, also they're trying to block us from talking about it because they know that the answer is within us so that we don't have to continue seeing our own babies suffering at the hands and because we fail to heal our own traumas. So that's all I have to say for now. I will talk to you.